All right. This is a big mama. And I'm starting this review before actually knowing what I'm going to say about this unit. And I'm starting at looking at the ass of the unit because I want you to understand how I feel looking at this. The intimidation. How fucked I'm going to be if I just, I just, I'm just, I just, I just, oh my God. So this was loaned to me by a user. This was not sent to me by Monoprice. This is the Monoprice HTP1. And it's their 16 channel surround sound processor that costs four gemstones or $4,000. I don't know, however you want to fucking view that. And I'm showing it to you here first. Me, happy, giddy, just finished a review of a product I understood and knew all about, and it was great. And now I'm gonna start the process of figuring out how the fuck do I review a $4,000 processor, which I guess I could start with the build because that doesn't really matter. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get into the nitty gritty of how insane it is and how the navigation works and what you need to get a processor like this going. But I mean, it's, it's relatively light. There's no amplification. If you don't know what this is, by the way, when you do surround sound, you basically have three choices, three. You got a surround sound receiver, which is what most people do. Mine's upstairs and it's just, you know, it's a Tascam unit, which is a rebranded Onkyo. And you, you plug your HDMI in or your coaxial digital in and you get some surround sound, whether it's compressed or uncompressed. And it usually has video switching and then it has processing for the surround sound and then outputs to speakers. Speaker outputs, that's the receiver can have speaker outputs. You hook up just normal passive speakers to it and they, it powers it with the volume knob. There's levels of receivers that can then have pre-outs where like it has an amplifier for the left and right channel, but it also gives you just RCA outputs. So you could run powered speakers or your own amplifiers, amplifiers for front channels. So you get some big ass towers that you custom built and they need like 500 watts a channel. Most receivers, receivers in general, don't have that power. So pre-outs would be used to jump into that, and then you could use the other normal speakers on the normal amplifiers. Then there's this sort of shit, which is pure processing, giving you no amplifiers at all, just outputs. These are all just signal outputs in balanced in, I'm assuming four volts, and you hook these up to whatever you want, whether it's powered speakers or amplifiers, crown amps, things like that. And you can do anything you want with it. Um, I said there's three different types because what I'm doing in my home theater is the third type. It's the rarest type. It's the it's the top 1% of the top 1% insane people who don't even have the DAX built into a single box. It's a whole fucking mess. If you want to know about my setup, there's other videos that go over my setup and Zeus. Link the video where I try to explain my setup poorly in the description, where it's just a fucking mini DSP and then it has to be a computer and it has to have USB and it's a whole thing. Um, now this is sort of where the normal, I'm beyond enthusiast, I'm just a crazy person. I use like some sort of crazy person. And then this is like enthusiast levels because now you're taking full control over all the amplifiers. You don't even have the option. At least if you get like a higher end Marantz, that's, you know, it's got all, it's got 7.1 pre-outs, which means it's got eight RCA plugs. And you can be like, I'm going to use the left and right for an amp, but I'm still going to use the center powered off the unit. The rear is powered off the unit, etc. This, looking at this, the problem I'm going to have as Zeos Pantera is I need to find either, if I wanted to set this up fully, because we have left, right, center, sub LFE, left side, right side, left back, right back, uh, LFH, RFH, LTM, RTM, LTR, RTR, LW sub two and RW sub three. If, if I wanted to use any number of these to actually demonstrate how this sounds, I either need to have this many powered speakers or enough amplifiers that take balanced outputs, which I don't have. I have a lot of audio gear, but I don't have racks and racks of, of pro level amps. So I'm going to be pretty fucked. But either way, I'm going to delve, dive and fucking bash my way into this unit and at least get the functionality of the, the front screen and tell you how the setup goes. And then we'll talk about it because it does the, 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 of the three 
formats that are like the future formats. Like my, my setup, as much as it's the top 1%, can't do Atmos, can't do DTSX, and it can't do RO3D. And RO3D is my pick. In fact, I don't think I've ever seen a unit that does RO3D. And I want to know how this is going to fucking function because RO3, I, should I just spend the time now to explain it? Basically, surround sound has always been, the simplest is a left, a center, a right, and two rears, and a subwoofer. And you sit in the middle and you voices and everything on the screen comes out the center and you have left and right, which become the effects channels and they supported by the rears and then anything goes boom, 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 comes out of the sub. And if your speakers are all small, the boom, boom, boom takes over with all the things. Then, you know, 7.1 comes out and 7.2 and there's two subs. And then you get into like the 7.2.2 or 7.2.4 or 5.1.4. And the four are usually the Atmos speakers that go above your head. They either are on top of speakers and bounce off the ceiling and then back down. So it sounds like the sound is above you. Or there's literally ceiling speakers that shoot sound down. And the way Amos works differently than just like a surround movie is instead of it being like, this is right channel, this is right side channel, this is back right channel, it says an object sound file moves here. And wherever it moves, map file of where the sound is and where it's going and play it along every speaker on the path. So... RO3D is the one I like the thought of more because DTSX and Dolby are DTSX and Dolby Atmos are basically the same. You get a 7.1 and you get two or four ceiling speakers. Uh, RO3D, the last I checked, and it's been a couple of years since I looked into it, is either a 5.1. I don't know if they've expanded that to a 7.1. So a standard 5.1 setup, center, left, right, two rears, and then center, left, right, two rears, on a 30 degree angle above your head. So you have a speaker there and 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 then one speaker above your head that's the voice of God. I like the thought of that because they explained it. I listened to the videos about it and she, you know what? You're right. I can't tell four fucking speakers above my head, but I could tell if something's going from there to there and then here. That makes sense to me. There's like a, a, a maximum angle human beings can perceive that something is to their side or something is to their side and their top. But they really, once something's up here, it's just a big fucking jumbled mess and the humans can't detect it. So I like RO3D as a format on paper. I've actually never experienced Atmos or DTSX or RO3D in person. My friend's got an Atmos set up in his apartment and I mean to go get on there and listen to it. And he's like, you got one of these? I'm going to come. And I'm like... What was the joke Gigguk said? It was it was terribly great. It was like <laughs> he was talking about the show Arcane. He's like, if anyone within a mile of me had a nut allergy, they would have probably gotten itchy because he nut. Get it? Just because a nut, but the different type of nut. It was a great joke. It's not in context. Anyway, so now I'm gonna stop this video. This is just the intro to the video. I haven't even powered this thing up. I'm just explaining what this thing is. It's just a processor. I'm going to plug, plug a source into this and it's going to make surround sound things happen and it's going to hand it to me in a way that it wants me to put speakers and and subs around and I don't know how the fuck I'm going to do it. But that's how I feel right now. Kind of happy, yet kind of tethered to this fucking responsibility. Oh God, let's move on. All right. Welcome to its new semi-permanent setup, Harmonic Dine Zeus. So, um, little 15-inch little screen, hard drive, playing things, owner sent me, into the OPPO, into the unit, unit's powered on, I got the musician Andromeda here, getting fed out of the XLRs, out of the mains one and two, and this initial part right now is I'm trying to assess the DAC, and I'm not gonna be able to do it with a live show that I've never heard off of thing, so what I'm gonna do is, this has Spitif in, my computer, my main computer is right there. I'm just going to feed a fiber optic cable into it, start shuffling my music, and just assess the DAC. Um, probably throw a few headphones on it, because that was my main thing when I was building this theater. And one of my main complaints is that most surround sound receivers, whether it's a $250 you know, Best Buy one, or even a $1,000 Tascam like I've got, I can audibly hear a difference between the DACs because a hundred dollar DAC, I tell everyone just, just spend a hundred dollars on a DAC, you'll be fine. All these units have multi-channel single chip DACs. 
which guess what they're not spending a hundred dollars per two channels on it so i really want to see how poorly that's going to affect this uh the output i'm gonna to have to figure out a way to, to do a test you know what i can do all right here's what i'll do i'll get one of the andromeda no i'll get one of the musician pegasus drop it on that side do i have xlr inputs i don't i have mix outs i do have analog inputs right there so if i feed an external good dac into it set it to analog and then listen through its internal circuitry to that and then set it to digital input from whatever fiber optic i'm using and then listen through its processing and then output i should be able to assess the dac that's basically how i figured it out on my old setup here when my setup was over there um and that's why i put a bypass in because i just couldn't stand how shit it sounded how flat how lifeless it sounded through all the processing and if i ran a dac into it it sounded better but so um also we're gonna get to the lack of like this oppo watch this ready watching i put the remote it lights up as soon as you touch it as soon as you pick it up it's like i'm lit now shit's lit fam the menus are beautiful everything's smooth i just reviewed the oppo blu-ray player and then just forget the h uh tp1 but all right this this It's very loud. And I uh, will continue this review forever. Okay, so, lower this. So now you can see I brought the topping E50 over here. So it's a good enough DAC to say, okay, this DAC is good. What are you do doing? Fiber optic cable running here. Actually going into a tossing converter because it's fucking weird. We're gonna have to get to the, the nitty gritty. When I hit analog on this, there's an analog, a SPDIF, HDMI, and stream. When I hit analog, there's two analogs. You go analog one, you go analog two. When you go to SPDIF, there's six SPDIFs. There's coaxial one, two, three, and, and fiber optic one, two, three. I was originally going to do you know, fiber optic three, but every time you switch back and forth, it goes to the first one. So it goes from analog one to coaxial one. Bunch over there. And if I go to coaxial two or coaxial three, and then I go back to analog, and then I go back to SPDIF, it's coaxial one again. So I needed to plug this in coaxial to use the internal DAC, and I had to plug, I could have got a, you can't really do coaxial splitting because it's it's weird, you're better off splitting fiber or s splitting the two. So what's that little box is for? The little 10 DAC uh, Toslink and coaxial converter or splitter, whatever you want to call it. So I've been going back and forth now for 25 minutes. I don't have control of my computer, so it's just randomly playing things. And I'm going back, and it takes like a second to switch over. And back, and um, I'm running zero dB here. I'm going to get another set of headphones to assess a little greater. But it's, so far, I can't really... There's something different. I'm negative five on this DAC, which means the internal DAC here is sort of dropping the voltage before it sends it to the preamp. Versus this, unless this thing has an over voltage, because I'm running it straight into the analogs here, using these eminence connected, really nice, world's best RCAs. They're just really nice. They're not expensive, they don't sound good. They're just really nice RCAs. So I'm running those around. You guys are gonna get to see the entire mess. The mess of this input, using this and a switch box and the remote. And so far, so good. Um, there's some difference, I'm not sure if it's, more forward presentation on the external DAC through the analogs. Keep in mind, it is probably, and in all likelihood, taking whatever analog signal I give this, turning it back to digital. Because this doesn't want to deal with analog. This has very little, the only analog it wants are outs. Convert and send out. So what's actually happening is this DAC is creating a very clean RCA signals in, then this is doing its fuckery to it and then pushing it through everything because it has to be able to handle room corrections and DSP corrections and sending out to sub in case you break it up and surround sound. It's gonna do all that in the digital realm. So this isn't really a good test of the DAC capabilities of this because the only way to do that would be to have a switch box 
analog out of this into the amp and analog out of this into the same amp, completely avoiding that, which is what I'm going to do next. And I'm going to switch out a few headphones because whatever, um, and it's definitely incurring damage. Any sort of conversion from one to the other is going to incur some damage. Digital to digital is usually perfect, but we're definitely going analog to digital and then back to analog. So having it go from digital to analog and then analog to digital to analog is what I'm comparing. And I don't want to do that, so I'm gonna to have to find either a different amp or put an external switch box so I could bypass it and then really give you the nitty gritty on if this DAC sounds as good as something that goes straight from here to there. So I'll do that in like four days, I don't know, I'll see you then. Okay, welcome back. We are several weeks past and I've moved from that table and did my testing and listening to the DAX and it was like, okay, we're close enough, it's, it's DAX. Like you're paying four grand for this, it may as well sound good. So really trying to do my switching and it was like, all right, you know what? It's what you get, all right? If you want a separate DAX, you gotta do the shit I do. So what we're doing here is, oh, I don't know if you can see all four of them. I have installed some Poke on wall monitor threes into the ceiling. Um, these are the speakers I actually bought to put out on my veranda, <coughs> fancy. Um, and I'm just like, they're sitting in a closet. It's not warm enough weather to go outside and run speaker wire. So fuck it. So one screw into the ceiling, mounted four of these. If you want to watch the actual setup of this, that is on the secondary channel or the sound demo channel that is now called the secondary channel. Uh, I've got it wired up to the television. I've got my Swan M300 Mark IIs as fronts. I have the JBL 520C as a center i've got um well these 590 towers were just sort of like here so those are my side channels and then i've got the atom t5v's back here just because i haven't used the atoms in a while and um i fucking love them so now i have a 7.1 with all oh, the subwoofer the subwoofer i'm actually using the uh martin logan dynamo 300s both of them as a single point one the back of this is a goddamn disaster and that's what it's supposed to look like. I could actually only put one more set of Atmos speakers because this will support six Atmos speakers. If you go and watch the setup of this, I had to go to the manual and see what the hell because they're labeled funny. There's like, there's like front and then there's front height and there's like top height, center, middle, but it uses only the letters. So the, <laughs> it's like the ones that are not used are LTM slash LW or RTM slash RW. So rear width or L or RTM will be top middle, top middle, but what's the R right top middle. So yeah, so I had to look up the like basically the decoder ring, the Johnny Quest decoder ring. And I only know about Johnny Quest decoder rings because my father talked about them. I'm not that old. Um, but the next time I turn on the camera, this will all be running. It's it runs. I've got the Oppo player here. I've got the, the these two amplifiers here, which are doing the Atmos setup. I've got the Behringer A800 doing the side channels because you know if you're gonna do a side channel and you got them, you might as well. Uh, and I'm gonna give my impressions. I haven't done the Dirac corrections yet. When I do the Dirac correction, that's gonna bring around a lot of change because we've got some definitely miss fucking match speakers going on here. And it'll be a great test to see what Dirac can do. I also have only accessed, oh, I mean, did I even film that? I don't know if I've even filmed that. Hold on, I'm gonna turn, that's already on. I may as well turn the unit on while we're, this review is an epic saga. To save saga, we need to have idle girls. So let me bring up my Chrome and hopefully there isn't any very terrible tabs still open. Yep, Pixiv is there. Pixiv, I can never trust a Pixiv tab. But all right, we're gonna go here. So there, let me make sure you can see this by lowering the brightness down all the way. On the front of the unit, right there, 192.168.1.102. Um, that number, because I have it hooked up, one of these cables is a, a Cat5, which is plugged in, and that corresponds to this, which lets me control the unit. This is the remote control, which is, they think that this is enough to make the remote control for the action unit a pile of shit. It's not a pile of shit, it's just basic. It doesn't compare to the Oppo. 
but in here is where you do everything. And um, I'm gonna have to get up, hooked up to a laptop and sign into that because here's your settings. And you have your speakers where I can turn on and off up to five subwoofers, which makes no sense because there's not enough outputs. There's only three subwoof subwoofer outputs. And this this app's kind of broken because the whole page sort of slides. I need to slide just just this bit to get further down. And I had to do a whole bunch of things where I turned it sideways and turned it back up, and then it would it would scroll. Uh, base management is on. We do not have Dirac Live set up. It actually had the previous well the current owner. I'm not the new owner, but the current owner's room acoustic set up for Dirac, and I turned it on. And it sounded like absolute shit in here because his room and his speakers are not this room and these speakers. So I put it to just basically feed raw direct data to everything and we'll go from there. And um, so, yeah, I'm getting to experience Atmos. This is the first time I've experienced Atmos in my basement in not just my basement in the best spot in my basement with the carpet and the ceiling where there's no like reflections like there's concrete walls but they're rough concrete walls and those have stuff in front of them and then the rest of it is just couches and distance this is where i listen to speakers this is where the this is the best sounding spot in my house and i have atmos in it so if i'm gonna judge atmos by the way the girls had to move down here all the girls i'm so sorry girls uh, we will we will, I will find a spot for you up in the mezzanine and you will be in the sun once again, even though being in the sun is probably bad. I think it took away her skin color. But ignoring those and this, I, if I put on Oblivion, which is one of the movies I had hit go to, um, yeah, so system configuration, all that's in here. Volume's in here, which you can adjust on the fly. It's very speedy. No, I don't want to do that. Let's just do chapter selection. Chapters. Where are we going? There we go. 11. So, the biggest issue I have right now is I can't figure out with this unit how to level everything manually. How to say, okay, this speaker up three decibels, that speaker... You know, well, actually, that speaker will be down five decibels, and that speaker will be up five decibels. There's no manual way to do that, as far as I can tell. I can choose the inputs. I could do the everything here. I could have dialogue enhancement. But when you go to settings, it doesn't, like, let me, unless I have to be on a larger screen. I have to get my laptop. I guess I could do it on the silver laptop if I really want to dick around with that thing. That poor, poor thing. But, um, like... What do you got to say, Tom Cruise? She's my wife. Oh, shit. Literally, spoilers. Spoilers! But, I mean, this is not this is not the greatest scene. We are not an effective team. I just know we're, we, that's coming up. And I have been pleasantly surprised. I'm always one for the intimate home theater experience. And as much as, like, this doesn't seem like it's small, this is small to me. I, if I sit right where I'm, I calculated sitting, which is right here, I'm maybe seven feet from that speaker, less than six feet from that speaker, seven feet from that speaker. I'm in a little bubble. Please. You know, I'm gonna, I got to sit down here. What I have to actually do is I haven't watched an entire movie. I've just watched scenes like this scene. <laughs> So, yeah. I've just watched scenes over and over and over again. Stop that. So what I have to do is I have to bring a heater over here because it's fucking cold down here. It is currently 54 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Echo, what's 54 and a half degrees Fahrenheit in Celsius? 54.5 degrees Fahrenheit is 12.5 degrees Celsius. Okay, it's 12 degrees down here, and I've got like a vest on, and it's like I got a metal chair. Here's my seat. So I'm going to improve this situation so that I might sit here for... I need to do it for at least two, three days. I got to do Dirac correction. I'm going to do the smallest Dirac correction. I'm going to see how this handles it. Because as far as I can tell, I needed to level the speakers. I'll have all the amps. These amps will have actual knobs. 
These are both nailed. That one's sort of like where those are good. Those, that's up all the way. And it just kind of let it, those are actually turned down a little bit. But once I have it like set sort of roughly, I'm gonna let Dirac correct it all. And then I'm gonna give my actual opinion because that's what matters. We're here not just to review the HTP one. It was time for me to hear Atmos and give my opinion. Cause I have two full surround sounds in my basement now. A 7.1.4 and a, I guess this is just a 7.1, even though there's two subs under the front and then, actually, that's a 7.1.4, but there's two subs, so it's really a 7.2.4. this is a 7.1 where there's seven channels, but there's two speakers behind the screen that representing the center channel, but they're individual. There's one channel that's being shared with them, so that's really just one. So that's one, two, three, and these are just sitting here. Ignore those. And then they got the, the then I've got actual double side swans. So again, that's one channel. So it's 7.1, but there's actually eight, nine, 10, 10 speakers. So there's 10 speakers, there's four there, and there's six back here, and no Atmos. And if I needed to do Atmos, I see I can't do Atmos with my setup. I don't know if I, I covered this. If you've not seen this, there's no receiver here. There's this mini DSP, um, wow, 88D, I forget the goddamn model number. It's some absurd like medical device model number. And it's just, it's a DAC output and everything here is a digital input. It's just sending the digital input to everything. There's no DTS mode, there's no Atmos mode. You can't do it. It can give you eight channels. That's how many eight is. It can give you eight channels of uncompressed digital output. Here, deal with it. And then I have DACs everywhere. All these are using their own DACs. There's JDS Labs EL2 DACs down there. There's a bunch of Gashelli DACs behind the screen that you know decode everything and everything is perfect from the DAC to the amp, from the amp to the speaker. So with this setup here, um, we, are get, we are being given the analog output and then I'm feeding the analog input to the swans, feeding the output input, out, analog input to the subs, to these amps. Uh, balanced, everything has to be balanced, which is another limiting factor. If I just had RCA outputs on this, I could hooked up like three more amp different amplifiers. Like if I wanted to use a middle set of speakers here, I'd have to whip out the topping MX-5 because it's the only other amplifier in this house that has balanced inputs. And I'm already taking a risk using an adapter for the subwoofer out to go to RCA because they don't specify you can do that. And even the owner is like, I think you can, but it seems like people are having a hard time doing it. So, you know, if you, you got to, I, there's, I don't have a sub. My sub doesn't have none of the subs I have, except for that fluid, that little 10 inch fluid is the only one that has an XLR input because it's designed for powered monitors. But even then it's not a 0.1 sub. So we'll go with that and the two of those. And if it gives me any issue, I will switch to the fluid sub. Anyway, that's what we're currently working on. Really, uh, the, the setup of this took about three and a half hours, three and a half, four hours, just, just moving things and figuring out how I wanted to configure it and fucking the annoying ceiling things. So I'm gonna pause now or I'm gonna stop. You know, I'll come back when I've actually sat here and absorbed. Maybe I'll just roll my fucking couch. Yeah, I'm just gonna roll my couch in here. I got my couch, it's on wheels and it's just, I, I'm, just I'm gonna do that. And then I'm just going to sit here with a heater on me and blankets. I'm just going to watch a movie. And uh, I'll watch 10 movies, which that would actually take away too much time and have too much stuff to do as a, as a YouTuber. It's fucking wild how much having like not a real job matters because you have so much to do. But um, yeah, I'll be back. We'll see how this actually functions. Because as of now, the app on the phone or the website, it's not an app. It's a website on the phone is shit. If it's better and more comprehensive and I could figure out how to do Dirac on the laptop, well, then we're golden. Okay, so here's what's going on in the realm of testing. Uh, because my friend was giving me shit about it. So right now, I'm running through an Atmos test disc. And what I did yesterday is I played two, I think it was just two, full movies. Like this. What do you mean like this? Not, not the couch here. Um, what I'm doing, because my science brain is like, all right, let's see what Atmos is doing, is I have disconnected the side channels, I have disconnected the center channel, I shut off the front left and right, I shut off the rears, basically all these speakers that are level are off, and only, 
the Atmos speakers are engaged. However, what I did was get my laptop out. Oh God, don't fall. Please don't fall. I'm gonna settings in here and there's an issue. Let that keep playing. When you set up the speaker configuration, apparently Dolby has set a hard limit on what the configuration of speakers can be. And that sounded good. If you look here, you can see there's six Atmos speakers. It's very rare you get six Atmos speakers, but this unit can do six. I wasn't gonna put up two over the front. Unfortunately, what that means is I can't set, because it can literally these can't be moved. You have a front set, a middle set, and a rear set. You can't set in Dolby on this unit or any unit for that matter, I don't think, that you have just a center or a middle and back. I wanted to be like, I have only four speakers in the ceiling, no front, just middle and back. Can't do it. If you don't have front heights, you can't have centers. You can have all three. Here, let's just quickly go through this because I'll, I'll, I'll turn it all off. See these three switches down here? These are the three switches for the Atmos setup. So if you try to put on just the middle, you can you do it? You can. You can say you have just middle, two speakers, those. That's fine. Atmos allows it. This allows it. Okay, but I also have rears. Let's put on the rears. Huh. Rears won't enable. So what if I turn off middle and then try to put on rear? Rear won't enable. So what if I put on front? Okay, now the now the fronts that don't exist, I can enable those. Can I enable middle? No, I can't enable front and middle. Can I able, enable rear? Yes. So I could have front and rear and no middle. And then I could put on middle. But then I can't turn off front. And then it turns off rear too. It's like, what the fuck? Stop it. Because... This isn't because Dolby apparently they don't allow you to fucking mix it. It doesn't make any sense because the way I learned about Atmos was from a video like 10 years ago and I was super fucking excited about it where they showed a professional actual movie theater like a 300 seat theater and they showed like 70 speakers wrapping this whole space and each speaker was indicated on the on the display that a giant computer graph and it was like here here they were measuring and it was perfect because what atmos is is object oriented sound instead of having like oh this is the front left channel and you could extract that and here's the front you know side right channel and back right channel and those things have their own tracks what object oriented does is it says Okay, here is the sound of a bird. And it has to travel from point A to point B like this in a line. And what Atmos does, and what it did in that huge theater 12, 15 years ago, whenever they first announced Atmos, is Atmos will literally say, the sound of the bird, that speaker's closest. Now this speaker's closest, and now that speaker's closest, and now that's, and the bird sound will travel across as many speakers as it can use. And that's what happens here. It says, literally says object surround when you have it running because it's trying to move sound around. It isn't just like, if you add more speakers, it can put the sound in that speaker, even though it isn't legitimately programmed, so to speak, as a track. My problem with this particular setup is it's so fucking limited. I don't want height speakers. These speakers are already high enough. I just want two here and two in the back and then further back. And I can't set that up. So what I've done is I said, fuck it. And I turned on all of them. So we've got middle, center, we got front, middle, and rear. And uh, I actually do have another set of these and another amp, and I could actually go and screw them in. But for now, for testing purposes, I unplugged the swans from front channel duty and now made them front heights. So those two speakers, these two speakers, and these two speakers are acting as the Atmos speakers. And I've muted everything else. Muted, muted, muted. And what I did yesterday was put on two whole movies, and I didn't watch them. I just put them on, and I turned them pretty loud, and then I came over here and we watched uh, Lost in Translation, which is a great fucking movie. 
like really one of the best love stories told. And it's so weird because it's like 17 year old uh, Black Widow versus 51 or 53 year old Bill Murray. And it's, 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 a, it's a chemistry, man. Um, and probably one of the, there's very few movies I can think about that actually take place entirely in Japan. Like entirely in Japan. Black Rain, one of the Karate Kids. Black Rain, one of the Karate Kids. There's another one I, I thought of yesterday. Uh, Black Rain, one of the Karate Kids. Lost in Translation and uh, something else. Anyway, how did I get here? What am I doing? I'm wearing pants. Um, so watching Lost in Translation here. Surround sound movie, but not like not like an exp exploding movie. And just waiting for that to bother me. Because I, I don't have the time to physically sit down and listen to watch 35 Atmos movies straight through. So I'm just, I put it here and I'm like, all right, do your thing. And I'll know when the speakers are active, you know, for two hours when I'm doing something else for two hours. And every once in a while I would hear like, eh. and I watch the two movies I put on. The first one was the original um, Ghost in the Shell. Well, it's an old anime, but they remixed it to be Atmos, so whatever. The second one was Valyrian and... Th no, no, I'm sorry. I did that one. Then I did Valyrian during the movie and had some stuff going on. That's a much newer movie. I love Luke Bassan. I love the look of that movie. I just hated that main character. That dude was a douchebag, and I hate him. But I, I would love... I love, like, Luke Bassan and his space movies, so he should do more. Um, the other movie I put on was... Pacific Rim, which if you know Pacific Rim, that's giant robots fighting kaijus. And the only consistent time I was sitting there and bothered by the setup, aka bothered, aka the Atmos speakers were doing something, was when the computer voice was like, distance to shore, 10 miles. It was like that came on in an omnipotent fashion above the head. So what I'm doing now with like, these are the actual Dolby Atmos demo things from 2016, like Mad Max Fury Road, they're gonna have scenes, is I'm just listening to see what sort of information is getting thrown up there. Did the same thing when I got my surround sound, when I went from 5.1 to 7.1. It's like, all right, shut off the fronts, shut off the center, shut off the sub, just listen to what the rears are doing. See how much, how important they are, how much does it matter? When does it come up? Does it need this sort of quality? That's why I use like any old piece of shit speakers for surround sounds, because really, if you ever just watched an entire movie with just the rear channels, what's coming out of them is like, meh, the car go by. Or maybe some like ambient, like <sighs> when you're into space. It isn't like you're listening to, you know, John Coltrane and it has to come out of here belting perfect. That's why you spend all your money on the front stage and just whatever the fuck you want in the back. Whatever. Whatever you want for the top speakers too. Just, just let them happen. So I'm analyzing Atmos and how its usability and if I should go with all six speakers on top. I may just bite the bullet and set it to just centers. Just these two and ignore the ones I put back there. Just for the sake of that's the probably the most likely option a human being is going to put in their house would either be bounce speakers up or just two in ceiling speakers or just two on one monitor threes. And uh, I'm going to sit here and, and as I'm watching things, as I'm getting used to like, okay, I'm hearing what's going on. I'm going to start clicking on amplifiers and I'm muting things and be like, all right, turn the power back onto these, turn the power back onto these, you know, switch this back over to be fronts and then eventually just work into watching an actual Atmos experience movie. Because from what I've heard, I do enjoy them being up there. I think Atmos is probably, I wish it was more accessible. The bounce speakers try real hard, but they they don't work for everybody. It's one of those things that's like, ah, oh, fuck. Yeah, of course I want a speaker above my head. That makes perfect sense. But uh, I'm finding uh, so far with the movies I've tested with, if we get out of this, which I, I don't want to get out of this because this is allowed to be played and I can't put on like Lord of the Rings or something. Here. Leaf. Like the birds, the crickets, the demo discs, use them to the nines. Like birds and rustling and I wish movies that and I, I have this complaint for every movie with surround sound, period. I wish movies relied on surround sound more, but they're still tuning a lot of movies when they make them for just stereo out of a television, out of a shitty television speaker. If every movie was designed to have every speaker working all the time in every scene, 
It'd be amazing. Even like conversations at a restaurant, you just have other conversations going on in every object oriented space around you, but the, that one's the focus. Oh my God. So yeah, this is the leaf. So what I'm gonna do now is the same thing I've been doing. Just listen. And it really irks me as a human being to be like, oh, I gotta go do work now and then jump into a, a sofa in my basement and watch movies. And I still haven't gotten over that shit. Like, oh, this is my job. No, it doesn't feel good. I feel like I need to be doing something else. So I'm going to do this. You guys hang on. Enjoy the timestamps. We want to jump around and skip this, like, preachy bullshit. And I'll come back and uh, give my assessment of this unit. Because now that I've got it on a laptop, changing the settings in this is actually pretty nice. Um, I still have to get to the actual Dirac correction, which is going to be... Ugh. Look like much happened, but I added another amplifier. There's the topping. Which one are you? The uh, MX5. I had to put a bunch of balance adapters on it because I don't have any more of these quarter inch inputs. But there you go. Now I have fronts. So I just ran the signal generator, which it's nice that you could just like turn it on and collect the, the, the channel. But I would love to be able to stand back there with a the remote and switch the different ones that are signaling. So. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now there are six Atmos channels because it literally forced my hand. I didn't want there to be six. I was happy with four, but now there's six. So now when I listen, I'm gonna have to do it like this, which isn't the worst case scenario. Um, make sure ZS you link these Polk on all monitor fives. Oh, I made, I made a, a good correction when I put the front ones up. Instead of putting the screw up there and then trying to hang it like I did for these, if you watched my video, uh, the setup of this, I stood over there, you know, on the floor and I took a couple of chocks of wood, extra piece of wood, put two screws in it, made sure the two screws lined up with the screw hole, then put one screw in the center. So I walked here, put one screw up in the ceiling and then just hung it because it was perfect already. It was like, okay, it's done. So... My problem is the, the board up there is crooked, where the beam in the ceiling is so it's slightly tilted, but it doesn't matter. So now it's officially, officially a 7.1.6, and we'll continue along. I know this is sort of like in the middle of the review of the HTP1, but I really got to talk about this Oppo Blu-ray player. What model number are you? You're ridiculous. This, Oppo stopped making Blu-ray players and they never should have stopped. They should have never, they, they, this thing is ridiculous. Like the actual setup menu, like under audio processing, I can go output volume. I can change the volume in the Oppo. Uh, filter characteristics, like you can on like high-end DAX. Sharp roll-off, slow roll-off, delay, super slow. So let's go super slow, delay. And then you do speaker configuration, you get a full layout in that for down mix, which you can test tone through, but it's not working because this thing isn't waking up from it. But I'm assuming that works. The remote that just you you every time you move it, it lights up. Like there's no button. It just always is lit up. You can set a crossover for the bass frequency, even that. Then you come out of here and you got to like audio output setup, spit of output mode, HDMI output mode, bitstream, device setup. You can set the energy efficiencies, network setup, which is not connected on it. Video output settings. You could choose the color space. The uh, Where was it? Hold on. I just had a, a playback setup. Where was it? Gapless playback mode, subtitle shift. I haven't had a, like a physical media player in a long while. Um, this thing is nuts. If I scroll down past this, output volume fix, speaker figure. Where was the thing I was just set up in? There was something that was ridiculous. Oh, uh, from panel brightness, I could change that to dim, to dim that. Like, that's nice. I'm just, I'll do that. Although I really shouldn't because that's, I need to see it. Pr uh, persistent storage. What does that mean? Oh, internal flash memory. Because this, this thing is not even reading a disc. There's no disc in here. I haven't had to put a disc in it. I can put a disc in it. But I've, I've got, there's a hard drive over there hooked up to it. There's a hard drive hooked up to this Blu-ray player. This thing is ridiculous. Anyway, I'm trying to see if I can get this, um, I'm getting ready for the final thoughts on it. 
And I just, I, I had to give some props to this, this freaking Blu-ray player. It's just so good. Let's see how this freaks out again. It freaked out earlier. Uh, yep. You're listening to the Dolby Digital Companion Track, mm -hmm. not the Dolby Atmos Track. This disc is intended to demonstrate. To listen to the Dolby Atmos soundtrack, please set your Blu-ray player to Bitstream Out and connect your player to your Dolby Atmos enabled receiver via HDMI. So I can't get this particular one to work, but if I go back, because I want to be able to play something, to yeah, I get Digital it. Digital Companion Track, not the Dolby Atmos Track. This yeah, disc yeah, is stop. I, I want to get something playing while I'm actually doing this video. And it can't be a movie. That will never work. So let's see if volume 22 works. Because the, the guy who loaned me this has all these Blu-rays ripped full size onto that hard drive. And like putting... Little rant. Little baby rant. Because I don't think I've did it on the video yet. Alright, I just shit my pants. Um... No, there's so a little rant about DTSX, Atmos, uh, and my favorite RO 3D. The problem is, even if you have the setup, and I officially fucking have the setup, all right? The best thing, the best sounding thing in it is always these demo tracks. It's super, it's, it's just like having my VR headset. I have the, the Valve Index. If you want to show someone the index, where do you take them? Because I usually take them to the um, oh the labs, the, the the Steam the labs one, which is developed by Valve specifically to show off the technology. But then you go into a game, and it's barely cracking the surface of what's in the labs thing, the labs demo with the grip strength and everything, picking up the rocks and squeezing it hard to crush it. So it's like, it's kind of like that. Like, I still enjoy the fuck out of VR. The VR Paradise, the strip club game, is amazing. And apparently there's now a stripper that kills and eats you. Spoilers. Um, but this feels like that in the way that, like, every time I go to, like, test out this Atmos, I have to go and, and ask people and forums, like, hey, what's the best Atmos movie? Because even if you have movies in Atmos, they're not using to even 70% of the capability of what this can do. This is remarkable. All right, it's well beyond what most people are gonna be able to put up with. I have fucking six speakers on my ceiling right now with three different amps and an amp on the floor for the side, then the back ones are self-powered, the front ones are swans. There's so much going on right now. Great, it's gonna play clips of movies. I don't want clips of movies. The poison on the water, is this mu music? It's probably even worse. don't know if this is music or just a video. I feel like this is going to be music. I'm going to get copyright claimed, and I don't want that. But, um, yeah, I feel like every time I put on one of these demonstration discs, I get the full experience. That fucking Dolby thing, that, that intro, the THX intro, that like, woo, that's almost always consistent of the best thing you're going to hear out of any setup. The thing that's been coded specifically to take advantage of not side channels or back channels, but side and back and six fucking Atmos sounds. It's the only thing that uses them all. Like that literally just washed over the whole, that's, it did it again, it did the whole thing again. And it's frustrating because I sit here and try to watch a whole movie. Because I want, I want to experience this Atmos fucking thing. It's beautiful, and I feel like nothing takes full, full. I'm talking about, and this is this is not just Atmos in general. or have anything to do with this receiver. This has got to do with 7.1 content also. If someone comes down to my basement, they see my my other theater, my the other. I have four surround sounds currently hooked up. By the way, got one of the mezzanine to test out the Emotiva amps. I got my one in my sunroom, which is just a 4.1. I've got. This one here, which is a 7.2.6, and I've got my 7.1, but it's actually more like 11 speakers. I don't know. Um, I got four of those. And if I want to show somebody, I can't just put on anything. The problem is content because you have to, like, like no, 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 not just this movie, 
This specific scene from this movie, that's where the, the money shot is. You know you know what's a, it's weird? Because, like, Saving Private Ryan. I could put on the entire beach landing scene in the beginning. It's great. You know what the best sounding part of that whole movie is? When they're talking to each other in the church. When it's quiet and there's just bombs in the very, very distant. And it's just Tom Hanks and, um, God damn, and I had that actor's name. He's been in every, like, fucking Quentin Tarantino movie. Tom, Tom's, uh, yeah, him. They're just whispering to each other in the church. And the surround sound all of a sudden functions perfectly. And you get the echo of the, in fact, if you unplug the center channel and that scene's on, you can still hear that conversation because it's echoing around you. You get the whispers there and there's an echo and, and it's, it's beautiful. And I, it sucks is that most movies, I would say, I'm going to say 95%. That, that's how fucking serious I am. 95% of movie plays. Every, I'm, I'm thinking about this is completely conjecture now. This is just me going off knowing people. 95% of the time, if a movie leaves Hollywood and ends up on a Blu-ray or a DVD or a streaming service or is on cable, 95% of the time, it's coming out of TV speakers or basic stereo. The surround sound, like like home theater in a box shit and, you know, fucking sound bars with rear speakers, those are starting to edge into the market. And you know what? It's better than nothing. It's better than fucking TV speakers. But they know, Hollywood knows, mixing mastering engineers know that most of the time, eh, it's just going to be played in stereo. There are wonderful mixings and recording studios that are doing wonderful jobs. But if every, if not, it was the opposite, if 95% of people were playing on perfect Atmos setups and only 5% were playing fucking movies on their phone with one mono speaker, every mix would be perfect. Every mix would be intense. Every, we, would, we would enter a library in a movie and you would hear people talking in every fuck, the echo of pigeons on this feeling. You would hear it all. It would all be active all the time. And that's the problem that I have volumes this one just says volumes let's play that one is that most content the crowd is there the crowd is there there's balls on my screen was that it all right We got jungle sounds for some reason. Put the volume up a little bit. Oh, a nice thing about the... Uh... Oh my God. See, this is it. This is what I'm talking about. Show me an evil alien in a fucking movie that comes on the screen for the first time and when it growls, it goes... and fucking comes from the side. It's like, that is, that's imposing as fuck. They don't do it. It goes growl center channel. An object-oriented fucking up down. It's, it's, it's great. It's wonderful technology. It's like having flying cars, but we're not allowed to fly cars because you'll crash into the White House. So we have this technology, but no one's fucking using it. I feel like everything's gimped. I, I feel like audio engineers must go home crying. It just it's depressing. Home theater is some home theater is depressing. I love it. I love home theater more than I love stereo and music. But at least stereo music, we get everything in stereo music. There's no holding back because it's been out for five million years and everyone just assumes you have at least two speakers somewhere. But but this 7.1.6 or two, if you count those, even though they're the same fucking sub signal, I don't know if you'd count that as two subs because there's two subs playing, because it's really one signal just being split. If I hooked up sub one and sub two, I don't know if it would direct them differently, but that's my rant. This is my mid fucking or hopefully end of the video rant. Right? Like what? Like, I don't even know. 55 minutes in? And I'm just fucked. That's why time stamps are invented, people. Because Zeos needs to sit here and fucking yell. It's my job. Is to be happy about things and upset. And I'm upset because this sounds so fucking good. And I would love to have Atmos in my main theater. The problem is I know the content isn't there to support it. Someone would show up to my theater, and you know what I'd do? I'd put on fucking volumes.
This sounds ridiculous. There, there's, I can't even point to where the sounds are coming from because it's the middle between there. Oh God, what is that? If every, if I put on transformers, what is, what nightmare made this, first of all? All right, this is officially nightmare fuel. Jesus God. What a demo. What a demo. The, the shit crackling is coming from up there and here. Hold on, pause this. Pause. The thing I was going to say is nice on the remote is the dialogue up and down is basically a center channel volume adjust. I'm sure it's something doing more than that. Probably specific frequencies it's raising. But when you raise and lower the, 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 di the dialogue, it makes it come out clearer. One of the biggest complaints about movies is, again, the mixing and mastering doesn't come across too well as far as, like, I need more vocals. I can't hear what the fuck they're saying. That's why I'm always like, the center channel is the most important and should be the most expensive speaker you have. Not true in this case. I got that for 90 bucks. But it's a fucking JBL Studio 520, so eat my ass. That thing is amazing. Everyone I've recommended that with little four-inch drivers, everyone who gets one is like, I didn't know center channels could do this. If it's still $90 on JBL.com, please go buy it. There's no affiliate link, so I don't make no money, but my fans should own all the JBL Studio 520s. It's 520Cs. Did it, is it over? Yeah, this is what I would demo every, every single time to show off uh, this, because I sat here and watched movies, three or four movies. Just sat here, got to like 30 minutes of some, and I was like, you know what? It's not doing it for me. Next. I watched all of Blade, because Blade's an amazing movie. But I don't think this added anything. I don't think this $4,000 processor added anything to the greatness of Blade. But this, this is high-end VR. This, whatever is playing right now, makes me want Atmos, makes me want to spend four grand on a fucking processor. I'm in the sound. I'm, I'm in it. I'm, I am sound. By Maxim Zheskov. Yeah, Maxim Zheskov is... 2018, immersive audio. Just like, that was dumb as hell. That was, oh, way, those speakers are too high. They should be a little bit lower so that it travels up. Oh, there's another one called Transient. And the thing is, a lot of older movies, which don't have Atmos, they have to go and re-record things and make it so that it's object-oriented. So they could say, object of sound, move here, and it moves from there to there, maybe up to there. They have the freedom to fuck with it as hard as they want. They can make rain deafen you. This is a remarkable experience. I don't know, maybe I just haven't seen every movie that's possible. Maybe everything that I want to do is, it'll be there eventually. That was an amazing shot of lightning, by the way. Holy fuck. Yeah, the, the, the waves over the top. This, this is... And that's actual lightning and not like faked. That's super fucking impressive. I also don't think you need six speakers on top.
words. Um, I'm not 100% sure I talked about it on this official video because I did a couple live streams and I was down here basically complaining about shit. And I'm not sure if I talked about the problem with the Atmos setup on the ceiling. So I'll quickly go over it again. There's a problem with the Atmos setup on the ceiling here. I came here and I installed four speakers in the ceiling. Those two and those two rear ones. And I'm like, cool, that's all the Atmos I need since those are pretty high front speakers. I don't need a speaker there. See those speakers there? I don't want those speakers there. The problem was, uh, recycled sound. The problem was, wait for the thing to make a real loud noise. Oh. On the receiver, on this receiver, which I, John, do your thing. Here is the web address that's being hosted off that. You wanna talk about why it's $4,000? Because this is actually pretty amazing. It's not pretty, but it's functional. So, I'm gonna lower John's drilling thing. So you get the IP address from that, and I was trying to dick around with it on my phone and it's nearly impossible. You need a <coughs> full-size tablet or laptop. You just go to a web browser, you go to 192.168.1.102 is what that's assigned to my house. It'll be different than yours. And here's the main thing. You get to pick your input, Rune, Bluetooth, Optical. You get to pick your upmix select. So I'm on DTS Neutral X because this is a DTS test thing. And you get to pick night mode, filter, loudness, and dialogue enhance. And then you can click, literally click the speaker to raise and lower the volume. So we wanna make John quieter. We're controlling the unit. Then you go to the setup here which is a big blue button that says setup and it loads and it loads. It's really, it's kind of nice looking. Not the greatest, doesn't work well on mobile, but it's nice enough. Oh God, girls, don't knock over the girls. They're expensive. Move this up. And you've got, here's the layout and it, it asks you, this is the main speaker setup. So instead of going through a menu on a receiver like you normally would, this is literally check on do you have front speakers yes do you have a center speaker yes side speakers yes rear speakers yes large small where's their cutoff real nice and easy the problem showed up if you scroll down to when it's like upper speaker outputs maximum of six high or top speakers so your options here there's five of them it's left right top front left right top middle left right top rear left right front height left right rear height so those three are tops. I think we can agree that these are these are tops. Your mom's a bottom, but these are tops. So I only wanted middle and rear top speakers. Couldn't do it. Dolby doesn't allow it to happen. I had to do research into it because I'm like, what the fuck? Because the switches that have to go over. And you put one switch over, and you gotta put the other switch over and it's disabled. I could have just front and just rear or just center but i can't have just center and just rear doesn't allow you it says fuck off so i literally because it's not you can't move we can't say well this speaker is actually there or this speaker is actually here you could just turn them on and off here i could literally it's just it's just i shut it off so if i have if i want just middle speakers possible just these two you're done, you're done with the Atmos, you got two speakers, you're happy, you got bounce speakers, you set up a stuff, you're done. So now I wanna do middle and rear, and rear, and rear. It won't do it. How about middle and front? Nope, as soon as you put on front, middle shuts off. How about front and middle? Nope, how about front and rear? Yep, how about front, middle and rear? Yep, so I could either have just these or just those but not just those, or not just those. It's okay, it was like, come on, science, make it work. So I basically was forced to go upstairs, take these two other poke on one monitor threes out of my fucking sunroom where I was using his height channels in my fucking sunroom with my big Forte fours, bring them down here, 
get another amplifier, topping MX-5, because it has balanced input, because it can't do RCA output, it's gotta be balanced, I gotta balance it with a bunch of fucking adapters. I had to add two more speakers. Had two, or I could have set it as a six point six ceiling and just not had two speakers there, and then it would lose sound. They'd just be throwing sound out of the back of the unit, wouldn't even know there's no speakers there, it doesn't care. That's fucking annoying. If you're gonna let me pick and choose where the speakers go, let me pick and choose where the fucking speakers go. And it didn't do it. It doesn't do it. So yeah, that's like the only thing. And then you come in here and you get the Hertz ratings and you could set it to Dolby, um, which Dolby specific is not a cutoff thing, but like a bounce channel. I, you have to like read through it. Um, I have Dirac currently off. Here's your calibration. Let's just go over the whole app. This is it. This is a part of the video where I, where I touch on the app. I hope you guys can see it. I hope I can make it through without puking. Not because it's bad, but because it's a lot. So here is your basic calibration setup. Minimum volume, lip sync delay, maximum listening volume. Excellent option, by the way. Everything should have a maximum volume because you know there's a lot, there's a limit to everything. I could take it to about negative five, negative four before I think it's gonna kill everyone, but I have it at zero because I'm a badass. Maximum output level in voltage. Let's see. Oh, Jesus. I just set that higher. I did not know I could set that higher. I'm gonna l limit this to 10. Let's see, did it lower the volume to 10? We're at negative 40, can I go above 40? It stops at 10. So I just noticed that v voltage, max output level, three volts. We're doing all balanced stuff. We should be able to do, what, four volts is XLR? Because I felt like it was a little bit lacking in volume for a while now. Didn't affect my review of it, but let's put on something simil and we'll raise the volume and see. Because I just took it for like one volt to way more. Let's see. Oh yeah. We're allowed at like negative 13 decibels. Can I actively adjust the voltage? Four volts. Um, stop, that's music. Can't play music. Don't play music! If this gets demonetized because of that fucking song, I'm gonna take this internet video, I'm gonna put it on an SD card and burn it. I've gone through too much hell, too much hell to not make a penny on this. Please support me on Patreon. I know you're not buying the $4,000 processor through an affiliate link, which I think I can create. God almighty. All right, go return. Return. Stop. Give me options. So if I can just bump the voltage up, that means if you do a one point something volts, see, now here's the problem. The subwoofers are currently being run through an adapter. So the subwoofers are expecting two and a quarter volts. I'm gonna go to the very first Atmos disc because that has a bunch of, the 2016 one, which is the oldest, has some of the best demos. Um, Horizon is a good one. Oh yeah, it's much louder now, holy shit. I'm worried it might send too much voltage out to the subs. Listening to where cinematic audio has been. So, like I was saying, apparently you could adjust your output level. I don't know if you can go higher than four volts. No, four volts is the maximum, I'm gonna leave it there. Four volts is what XLR should be. What if sound could be? All these demos are amazing. So anyway, you get your lip sync delay, Dirac on and off, max listening volume, which is now limited to 10, which is probably not enough. I'm gonna limit it to negative 15, because that shit is already kicking ass. You get these one, two, three, four, five, six Dirac room corrections with six slots available, which the previous owner is this one, living room tight where it shows me the calibration delay in milliseconds for every one of his speakers, and he could add user delay, and there's the Dirac trims for the volume levels. So I haven't run Dirac for this setup, and I'm probably not going to, because this sounds incredible already, and I know exactly how good Dirac... The fucking bird, man. It sounds so good. Like, absolutely, I should run Dirac to make it, but... 
I need to get this video done. I need to get this unit shipped back to the guy in a time period. And it's not like I'm going to set it up. And like I could do the microphone things. If you haven't seen me do direct correction, I'll link the video in the description. Zios, you've been watching this for like an hour and 20 minutes. Link the video of you doing the direct correction for your home theater over there, the, the big one. Because it's basically you put the microphone, go do 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 do. Like, I think you could do as few as nine microphone positions and as many as 17. And it just listens to the speakers with the microphone floating around. And then it corrects them for volume and phase and everything else. I, I know DRX good. It's not like DRX can be better or worse in any particular unit. I like this has six different slots. So if you want to do a narrow correction for just speakers in front, you could do that. You want to do a setup for like if it's you and your girl and you're making out on the couch, you could do a narrow setup for surround sound. If you have 97 people sitting all over the fucking house, you can correct to have the most average fucking experience going. And there's six of them. Um, I don't know if you can switch through them on the remote. That's another. Let's see what the Dirac button does. I know there's a Dirac button. Uh, direct Dolby DTS stream analog spit if there is a direct button It's just direct on does it let me switch I Don't think you could switch the different filters because it says null 9.1.6 which is the maximum which I don't know how you would do nine RW oh you could do with channels as t also so I could actually have another set of speakers here and there that are with channels. I'm not doing it. Um, back the fuck up. So I'm gonna take it off the living room tight because I do not want to use his Dirac correction. I'd rather have it just be zeros and I could add user delays and trims here. The trims and decibels, I wanna raise and lower the channels. Now that I've upped the voltage, I could get my sound pressure level meter out and actually do proper like this is this much. I basically did it by ear. Because I have volume knobs for everything. Literally every channel has its individual volume because everything's powered somewhere else. That's the only one that doesn't have a volume knob because it's coming off the Emotiva monoblock. So that is my reference. Then the Swans have a volume control. All fucking six speakers in the ceiling have a volume control. The big uh, Behringer amp on the floor that's doing the sides has a volume control. And these have their individual volume control. So I basically did it manually. If you want to do it through this, you'd come here and do the trims. Um, after this is signal generator, which is very helpful, but kind of annoying because you can't use the remote to just go next track. You have to literally be at your laptop or tablet and be like, okay, signal generator on. Can I put the volume up on that? So it's that speaker and you come here and you want the subwoofer one. There's that, what's that? And also the fact that I could pick the buttons here, but I have to go all the way over here to see that's rocking right back. Just put it next to it for fuck's sake. It needs a little work. It, 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 it needs work on the, on the softer end of this. Anyway, that's your signal generator, which the signal generator is also not tied into the trims, which is weird. Which is very weird, in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, because if I went to calibrate this, if I turned on the signal generator and I had this left front, you, and then I go to, cal to stay on while I'm in calibration, then I got to switch tabs to come here and then adjust the trim. And then after I'm done adjusting the trim, I have to go back to signal generator and change to the next. To it's just, it's, there's, there's a flow that could be much, 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 much easier. Any Marantz, like with software, is just gonna be like remote control. It's gonna be displayed in the TV. There's no, there's an on, is there even an on-screen display? Holy fuck. I've been playing with this unit for weeks and it's never put anything on the screen. There's no on-screen display on this $4,000 machine. I guess it's not processing the video, which is a good thing. If you don't process the video and try to inject displays on there, it means it's pure, which is good. I'm okay with this. I'm okay with that. You know what? I'm okay with it. That is not a negative feature. Shut off that fucking pink noise now. 
So yeah, there's your signal generator, which you have to go back and forth and back and forth with all the way across and figure out what the fuck's going on. You have an actual, how many bands? Holy Jesus, God. 16 band parametric equalizer, which they call tone control. You turn on tone control, you got bass corner frequencies, treble corner frequencies, loudness calibration, bass booster cut levels, treble booster cut levels, parametric equalization. Note that a gain of zero is equivalent to bypass filter. So all of these are, and I have to scroll a little bit, these are all of your channels and you get 16 bands and oh my god how I'm fucking possible it would be to come in here and literally say well we're going to pick this frequency with a negative 4 gain and a Q of 1.4 and we're going to make it a, a low shelf type and then manually inputting it because here's the thing you'd have to manually input this if you wanted more than one band you'd have 16 of them Just Dirac correct it with a microphone for fuck's sake. That actually hurts my soul to think about trying to do that. And I actually had to go through each one of these to make sure that the previous owner didn't have any of these turned on. Because every time you switch it, that's a different, that would be a different fucking band and EQ. It would be different, different levels. You could do 16 different operations per speaker at different frequencies. No, that's amazing, but no. Certainly not with it on this with a lap mouse and shit. Input, you could set your input, HDMI 1 through 8. HDMI label is 1 through 8. You could change the label, just type it in, which is nice. You could set which ones are visible on the home page. Also nice, because there's not eight things plugged in here, and you're not going to switch through eight fucking empty channels. You could set all these things up. Uh, UHD compatible. You could set up PCM detect sensitivity. So nice. It's nice. I, I would love to have this on like my receiver upstairs and turn off some of the shit I don't use. Now, sound enhancement, this is interesting because you can kind of pick with just the remote. Oh God, did an anime girl fall? Lulu? Wait, is it Lulu or Lala? Layla? Fuck, I'm watching, I'm literally watching that show. Oh Jesus Christ, what is happening? This is the worst day, the sister. Ah, oh, okay. This is, this is, this is more important than the review. Lulu, Layla, I'm watching Two Love Rue, and I can't remember the main character girl's name. It starts with an L. Lala? Princess of the, the Devil Luke. Yeah, her. Don't knock her over. Um, so you have the options around here to go native, DTS, Dolby, RO, 3D, and direct. And if you do, like, DTS... Well, and nothing's playing, so it won't work. Apparently things need to be playing, so let's play something. And it's gonna go, okay, now it's true. It's detecting the input on the left side. If you haven't seen the fucking screen either, it's the input on the left side and the output, what you have it set to. It's it's nice, it's nice. I'm uh, So it's out, object audio, 7.1.6, native Dolby Atmos. If I come here and go DTS, op mix selectives native, off, Dolby, it says it here, or RO 3D. And I don't really notice a huge difference between those. And it seems to be st static here. So your options here are direct, show on homepage, native, show on homepage, Dolby surround, show on homepage, with a center spread checkbox. Not, a, not an adjustment, just a checkbox. DTS Neural X, which is selected currently, show on homepage. Oro 3D, which has show on homepage, and then uh, Oromatic preset of movie, and an Oromatic strength, which is set all the way up to 16. Because if you're gonna, well then do it. Here, let's click it here and see if that changes in the front of the unit. Nope, still says Dolby Atmos. Oh no, the uh, up, up mix selection is now Oro. So what if I go to native? It changes there. So it is changing there and here. So it's just, I don't know how it's supposed to change the up mix. Because, I mean, the speakers aren't moving. Yeah, me <sighs> Pass is messaging me. The speakers aren't moving, so it's just a matter of like... God, it fucking sounds good down here. Do you know what the saddest part is? 
only Dan's been able to experience this. And it's like, it's just me and Dan. Pasta's not here. Uh, my friend Brandon's not here. He's obsessed with Atmos. This thing has to go back. I've got like three days. Maybe I'll bring my neighbors over here and just be like, hey, sit here for a second. I just fucking blow their mind. Because if this doesn't sell you on Atmos, nothing does. But again, this, this demo is selling me on Atmos, not the movies I've been watching. I'll watch, I'm going to watch at least two more movies and then do a final fucking wrap up. So you get all mono, all stereo, reinforced bass is off. Add subwoofer signal to large speakers. So all these subwoofers that are, or actually if I do that, there now large speakers get low end to the fullest. I think you're large as well. And then wide synth on, synthesizes wide speakers when possible, which I don't have. Um, connectivity is CEC shit, which is nothing sucked up to it. And then system is just basically the IP address, the unit name. You could place the unit in standby from this screen, even though you could probably do it up there. Uh, the power on volume you can set. It was set way too low, I made it 20. Now link 20 is good now. Front panel brightness you could set here. Let's see. Yeah, it's a little bit dimmer. One from 10 to six. A volume display is button or slider or both, both four. Button slider, button four, slider, both, both four. It's not putting it on the screen, so I don't know why it's a display that I could adjust. We'll call it button four. Um, you could export the configuration, thank God. I would love to be able to do that on my current receivers, just like so export this to a file. Um, you can set your country code, display video status on home page. Yes, extend audio, advanced input settings, enable support tools. And that's basically it. How many speakers are actually set to large? Surround left and right and left and right wides are not, not available, so they're not even on. So, but everything else is small, small, small. So the only speakers I currently have set to large are the, the 590 sides, which is true. Like these will do kick ass low end, but I don't want to blow them up a 0.1 information. I rather just let these just hand it off to those, it'll be fine. It hasn't had a problem before. And fuck it, if you can play bass, do so. <sighs> All right, I think I've ranted enough for right now. I'm just, I just, while I have the energy, I got to talk. And if this is a three hour video, it's a $4,000 unit. And this is more interesting than most music products I review. I love listening to headphones. I love little fancy, I just did those that Dill Poetry tube amp DAC combo. Things fucking amazing. I'd rather play with this setup in my basement with the open ceiling, which I'm going to fix eventually. There's just disappointments in the entire industry and just a couple limitations on this unit and that's more of a Dolby problem than anything. And uh, I wish, I wish, I wish that more people had this. Because if more people had it, they would, they would tune for it. And that's what I want. I hope this is recording because I could not tell if the camera just turned on. It is. Okay. So I calibrated everything. Uh, I centered myself. I sat here and watched a couple things and I've determined this fact. If you're into live music performances, this is Hans Zimmer in Prague in 2017. If you do this, you do this. That's the bottom line, because this sounds incredible, because live music performances have no set structure. It's up to the you know mastering engineer to say, okay, when Hans Zimmer talks, it comes out of there, and when the trumpets play, it come out of, I don't know, between these two, and then when the, the woman, they did Lion King, because this is Hans Zimmer, they did Lion King, and... Um, the dude started there and then slowly walked you know, across and then he moved to the center. And then the woman who accompanies him, she echoed above through the through the Atmos stuff. And I was like, all right, OK, I, I see your purpose now, robot that passes the butter. This is a very expensive way to get about this. But if this is your if you are Hans Zimmer, 
you have an Atmos or a DTSX or a actually do I have it up, up mixing? I don't have it up mixing in anything. It's just straight native, and I have it quite loud. And I did my corrections and something. A lot of these had to go up, and like that one was fine, and that one had to go down. It was like no down. So yeah, I'm. I think I should probably now Zia's timestamp. Timestamp to here. Because I have to rewatch this fucking monstrosity of a video that's just six weeks long. This unit. We're here to review this unit. I'm I turned it into sort of like an is Atmos worth it? But we're really here to talk about a four thousand dollar processor. I don't think you have to concern yourself with the DAC output, I think it's clean enough. I did my testing with the headphones, and I tried to you know, bypass it. They're actually using quality. Whatever the DAC is in this is quality enough for me not to be able to notice a difference. I do wish it had a little more user-friendliness. I did, like, when I was jumping back and forth for the calibration, like, I had to switch between tabs and go, oh, do a sound here. You're supposed to use the DRAC and do it, have it do it all automatically, which is part of the thing you're paying for. But DRAC only adds about 100 100 to maybe, maybe $200 to integrate DRAC into a device. I know that from Mini DSP. So the fact that it's $4,000 is not like, oh, well, $1,000 that is DRAC. So it's only like a little putting in there. The build itself is fine. Like it looks decent. The big old power button, the knob. It, it doesn't scream I'm $4,000. But then again, a processor like this is not going to be front and center in your home theater where everyone has to gawk at it. Usually, if you're doing a mega, a mega Atmos setup, this is in a closet somewhere. So it looks good enough. It looks good enough. I think the remote and things like this leave something to be desired. Like, I don't know, like, like user inputs and last and dim and all these giant buttons and the, the volume. I want, like, even the, and I want to mention the Oppo again. The Oppo is a fantastic fucking Blu ray player. And I'm not playing Blu rays, I'm playing a hard drive that has Blu ray rips on it. Uh, provided by the owner. I mean, like the things you could do with this, the AB repeat, the, the HDR settings, you could change the resolutions on the fly. You could change the picture settings on the fly. This is all through the, the Oppo. I'm going to link this Oppo. If I, even if I have to do it on eBay, I'll link it on eBay. The fact that I could, while a video is playing, completely ignore my television and uh, dick around with uh, brightness, contrast, hue, saturation, sharpness, noise reduction, and picture modes. So, all right, back to back to the unit. Back to the reason you're all watching this. I don't think there's much you can ask more for in an Atmos processor. I think the limitations I would complain about are not Monoprice or the HTP1's fault. It's all Dolby's dickery. It's, it, it's too locked into the, the shape. They're like, oh, you want one Atmos? Well, you have to have six speakers on the top. The whole thing I complained about the last segment of this video where it's like, but I don't want to have speakers there. I want to have just there and there, and it wouldn't allow it. If I wanted to integrate Atmos into my main theater, this is my theater where I know I set it up. It's only a 7.1. It can only ever be a 7.1. But I have, you know, a pair of sides on either side. And I would love if I could set up in an Atmos way where it knows that there's a right, I guess that would be right width, and then that would be side, and that would be back. But if they were all Atmos channels, if they really let you fuck with it and say, hey, here, 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 and here, and you know, based on angles of, from the main user position, I would Atmos this place in a heartbeat. I would just put, I don't think these curtains are, these are actually pretty heavy curtains. I don't know if I could put speakers just right above them. But I would Atmos my setup in a heartbeat. But I can't. So I can't do it in the way I'd want. I, I want more flexibility. I want that full, you know, actual paying for a giant cinema theater in, you know, Wales processor that lets you define everything. And while this is doing its job, as far as letting you do the direct corrections and sound enhancements and all the other signal generator -y things, it's doing basic home theater receiver things. I love the fact that it's on a laptop. I love that. I love the ease of that. There is no app to install. You just go to a, go to the IP address, plug it into the network, or connect it to Wi-Fi. There is a way to do Wi-Fi. I believe. Yeah, there's Bluetooth, there's ground. Where's the antenna? Maybe there's no Wi-Fi antenna. I don't know. I, it's it's. I feel like this unit could be could be fifteen hundred dollars. 
All right, that's the bottom line of this, this review. This unit could be $1,500, but there's the supply and the demand problem. If they make it $1,500, they're not gonna sell more. They're gonna sell a certain number of these. There's a certain number of crazy bastards who are want, they want a 7.1 or 7.3.6 Atmos setup. I want a processor for that. That number of people will not increase just because you bring the price of the processor down. That's the problem. So they know they're gonna sell only X amount, so they have to make the price equivalent to the amount of effort put into designing and engineering it. So it's $4,000 because they're only gonna sell 350 of these a year, maybe, maybe 350 of these a year, I doubt it. It's probably more along the lines of like 150 a year. And at 150 a year, if they wanna pay for the, the actual process, the setup and the, the people they have to employ and the marketing, they have to make it $4,000. That's the problem with all products. You make something very good that could be cheap. You know, that's why the MC700 Emotiva processor, that was 500, 600 bucks. Has no amps in it. Opened it up, it's a little board. It's a little board, it's, 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 it's nothing. But people would have to be willing to get something like this and then go through all the hassle of setting it up with amplifiers. Now I'm using just these because, I mean, I even have an Emotiva 7 channel amplifier in the house right now. It's only RCA inputs, CA7. I'll link it in the description. The the A7 Emotiva amplifier, which is like a six seven hundred dollar amplifier, only has RC inputs, which means I can't hook it up to this. This really needs. If I could add anything to this unit, the RCA outputs that accompany the XLRs. Just 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 give it to me, because I could link this in the description, the adapter that goes from XLR to RCA. I could link that and I could, you could come over here and you could lower your max output level in volts to be RCA levels instead of four. But the, the people in the forums, the, the owner of this unit who has done the research on it says it is not recommended that you plug, you know, adapters in. And that's a big limiting factor because if you have, even if you want to use old vintage amplifiers, like I would not be able to use these swans if they only had RCA inputs. Luckily they have XLR inputs. I mean, using powered speakers is the way to go, in my opinion. This way you don't have to worry about any amplifiers. And if you get something that's already pre-DSP corrected for itself internally crossover-wise, then, you know, you throw Direct at it and it's the world ends. So I would add RCA outputs to this, just right above it, just another another row of RCA, just right there. Just so I, I could have the option. Because even plugging in my subwoofers was like is like a risk because I'm using an adapter on it. If you're gonna do $4,000 worth of stuff, do everything. And that's the only thing it doesn't truly have going forward is the connectivity to any sort of amplifier. If you wanna use vintage amplifier for your front stage, I, I, I got, actually that actually has it, that one. That one actually has balance. So I could, if I really, 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 hold on, wanted to, I could hook the uh, A46 or AccuPhase up as a front stage for, for that processor. D do I want to? Mm, kinda. But if I really wanted to use my father's spec too, or something, or something I just have lying around, it just wouldn't work. So RCA is missing is a big negative. It doesn't concern you if you buy, obviously the owner of this has the matching Emotiva amps. So all the Emotiva amps have XLR inputs in the you know, seven channel array. So you put, 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 and you're done. So it's just, that's, uh, for this unit, for everybody that's gonna look for buying it, I mean, it's not super large. It doesn't get hot. It barely, it has no real demand on processing power. It's just sitting there doing its thing. Is it worth 4,000? I think if you are specifically into things like this, into having the latest and greatest, even if I think most movies sort of like pull their punches, in their encoding of it. I, I think maybe in the future, if we see it more and more, because 2020 wasn't exactly a year for new movies to come out. And the ones that did come out, a lot of them were either Marvel movies or just like very, very quiet, very, very talky movies. I'm okay with those movies, but they're not gonna really take advantage of the... I would love to watch a documentary, like a, a really slow paced movie that takes advantage of 7.4.6 Atmos. 
like one of the beautiful things about this the music here that I'm listening to the Hans Zimmer is when the audience is just when they finish a song and the audience claps you're there in the audience they, they're you are they are recreating for this space the ambiance of Prague or whatever the hell Prague Philharmonic place they are playing in where there's a mezzanine in the back where there's people to your left and right where you hear people clapping almost none of the applause comes from in front of you because that's where the stage is it just fills this space if you have the right content the right expectations and the budget yes i think you should buy one of these i can't wait for five years from now because that's a fucking chunk 2027 2027 things like this should be available for half the price two grand get your own things maybe they've improved it maybe it comes with you know external uh hookups so you don't have to actually it should honestly the next revision of this should also have streaming built in it shouldn't expect a source at all just stream directly from from things i'm i'm usually against that i usually don't like when, when items have like built-in smart functionality like just be a processor or just be a tv i never liked smart tvs when they came out I'm like why just be a monitor and i'll you know plug in a computer or a or fire stick and when the fire stick gets upgraded i take it up out go to throw my fucking tv away i still believe that but at this sort of price point just to ease the setup because you have to mess with the uh, the actual you know blu-ray the source to send the right signals to give you the app I think if you could just stream from a premium service that knows you have Atmos and it just puts it all in that, that would probably be the next step. I don't want to do nothing. I don't want to fucking hook up nothing. Anyway, I think I have to end this video because it just, it's just basically a rant video at this point. Anyone who made it to the end of this, congratulations. You win absolutely nothing. I'll put a link somewhere to something that you can, you can download. Yamaha. That is the wildest looking thing she's playing. Um... Yeah, so I'll, 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 that's it. I got to pack this thing up now and get it back to its owner so he could actually use it. I've sort of stolen it. I know I'm going to get a copyright strike if I keep that going. Even if it's from Prague. Yes. All right, thank you to the user who sent this. I'm... I'm going to be a little sad when it's gone. I get to rip, rip all these speakers off the ceiling, though, because this is temporary, and these belong outside of my veranda. I have a veranda. And in the spring, I want to be able to play music out there and just, like... And the thing about sound reinforcement is if you're going to go outside and put outside speakers, don't put two speakers. Because two speakers means you got to play them loud. Don't put four speakers. You can play them less than loud, but you put six speakers, and you can play them like this, and it'll still have music everywhere. So going back to ripping this place asunder... Maybe I'll buy carpet for the entire basement. How much does it cost to carpet an entire 3,000 square foot basement? Make it much more livable down here. All right. Links. Patreon and subscribe. Oh, my God. I've made it to the end of this video. I've made it to the end of this video. You guys have been watching it for like an hour and 30 minutes or something. I've been filming it for weeks and ignoring it and going away and going, oh, I have to film the thing. Now i got to sit down here and watch fucking Hans Zimmer in Prague. Oh, the effort. Patreon and subscribe star. Literally support this channel now. The YouTube algorithm is garbage. Thank you for your support. You get to see reviews like this early. And you're going to need it because it might take you three or four days to watch the goddamn thing. You get to participate in the yard sales. Nothing here will be in the yard sale. But I have a whole shelf of things that will be in the yard sale. So anything that companies send me or I buy or people just donate to the channel, that gets sold off. That money goes to paying, well, my bills. There's bills. There's just there's, there's fucking bills. I'm, there's, I'm not going to fucking lie to you and say it's going to go towards, you know, some sort of amazing charity other than Zeos has bills. Um, you get to also access the Sound Demo Oasis where modern sound demos are lossless. I might move all my sound demos just to that platform because putting them on YouTube is a risk. In 2022, putting anything that plays music over and over again and copyright claims, copyright claims over and over again, is scary shit. So maybe that might be the only way to get sound demos in the future, but you have access to it for the $5 tiers on both Subscribestar and Patreon. $10 gets you in the behind-the-scenes private Telegram chat where those fucking people, I've been annoying them for six weeks, they know exactly what's going on with this fucking setup, and it's like, I complain about this, and I ask a question about that. So if you want to be part of the behind-the-scenes, they're basically the uh, the roadies of Z-Reviews or in the $10 chat. 
because they all exist and they have their own little conversations, but then I show up and I'm like, I have a problem, because they're the people I ask what my problem is. I'm not an omniscient, you know, audio god. Although the, the symbol, my little logo says God of audio, God of sound. But if I have a question, I ask them first, because I feel like they're paying to be there. They should be honored to answer my my, my queries. Um, so you can get in that chat for ten dollars a month on Patreon or subscribe star. You also get access to a lifetime membership swap meet. And people have put all sorts of things up there, graphics cards and graphics cards and lots of headphones, lots of amps, UK only, pickup only, everything from cheap stuff to expensive stuff, only accessible to people who have been $10 patrons ever. Um, and yeah, that's and Hi-Fi Guys and the Hi-Fi Guys Forum. I want to thank no sponsors for this video because no one sponsored this video. I'm hoping to get more, more sponsors. I'm hoping to get any sponsors. I literally only had one sponsored video in my entire career. It was Deconi. And I didn't know how much to charge him, so I'm like, I don't know, give me 500 bucks, I'll talk about pads. And that was the biggest under, underselling of a amount of time I've ever done. Because that shit took me like four or five days. That should have been like a $10,000 fucking sponsored video, like holy shit. But um, yeah, no, if you're looking to sponsor yourself on this channel, I prefer non-audio things actually. Foods, spices, um, the handy is going to consider sponsoring me. That's a machine that, you get it. Anyway. Love the colors on that. I'm done here. Links and wallpaper from the very beginning. I, I just literally opened the first section of this and I forgot all about starting it on that desk. We've made a journey together, people. <laughs> I'm gonna have to premiere this, aren't I? Everyone who joined us for the premiere, thank you. This was, I, it was a fucking, I'm done. I'm so done. It's gonna take me a, two days to clean this mess up and move the speakers back around, but uh, I wanna thank you all for, for sticking through it. Anyway, go back to your normal lives now, knowing that you're not going to spend $4,000 on a processor, but I will link Zio's final link of the fucking day. I will link the cheapest receiver I can find that is Atmos that has pre-outs. I'll probably ask the patrons if they know which one that is, but for, I will link it. I will find that and link it. Anyway, I'm done. Thank you all for stopping by. Holy fuck. It's, it's been so long. Now back to doing laundry and normal life. Bye.